me, PC gamers! The revolution has begun, and it will be streamed! According to AMD, anyways. Yep, the company is hoping that this graphics card, the RX 480, will not only help gamers to rise up and be able to play demanding games for a decent price, but also that it will help AMD rise back up to their former greatness. Let's face it, AMD's last couple of generations of GPUs have been somewhat lackluster. The 200 series tried to compete with Nvidia at the high end with little success. Fiji was the first GPU to get the benefits of high bandwidth memory, but the Fury line and the R9 Nano didn't quite entice gamers as much as AMD might have wanted. So Raja Kaduri and the team at Radeon Technologies Group were like, fine, you know what? We're gonna make a super power efficient card that plays current games at high settings with excellent frame rates and make it only 200 bucks US to boot. How you like that? Turns out, we like. Now for the reasons I just talked about, PC gamers have been hotly anticipating the release of this card. When AMD revealed the 480, they said it was a card that could power VR experiences for 200 bucks, and that is super exciting. Not only because getting performance like that would be easy on your wallet, but also because it seemed like AMD was changing tack somewhat. Rather than competing with Nvidia for the most badass king of the GPUs, they seem to be going for moderate to high performance for a low to moderate price. Because let's face it, not everyone wants to drop 700 to 1,000 bucks for the most beastly thing that there is out there. Now, we were incredibly fortunate to get not one, but two RX 480s sent to us by Brad from AMD. Brad, you are the man. You, we owe you our lives and I will name my firstborn after you. And they're both the 8 gigabyte version of the 480 as well, not the 4 gig, which is actually the $200 one. Which means that we were able to test the proposition AMD made at their launch that two RX 480s could potentially beat a GTX 1080 in some scenarios for less money. Now let's get right to that, since that was kind of the big deal that grabbed headlines at the RX 480's launch. The scenario in question was AMD running the Ashes of the Singularity benchmark on stage at 1080p on the crazy setting. The GTX 1080 got 58.7 FPS, while the RX 480 got 62.5. This was a huge deal, because two RX 480's, that's around 400 bucks. Well, I mean, depending. While the 1080 Founders Edition is 700 bucks at MSRP, so come on. So with that in mind, let's jump into the benchmark, starting with that same test, Ashes of the Singularity at Crazy Settings. For our test bench, we're running a Skylake 6700K with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 on a gigabyte Z170MX Gaming 5 motherboard. So our numbers will be a little different since a lot of people are benching with X99 systems. So at 1080p, our two RX 480s in DirectX 12's multi-GPU mode got 63.9 FPS to the 1080's 60.7. So a very similar gap to AMD's test at launch. At 1440p, the 480s got 52.6 to the 1080s 50.6, and at 4K, the 480s finally lost with 40.1 to the 1080s 41.9. Those are average frame rates, by the way, and all the numbers you'll see today are average frame rates. So AMD certainly wasn't fudging the numbers in this scenario, at least. Two RX 480s match or beat a GTX 1080. Now, interestingly, originally we ran the Ashes benchmark on high settings, not crazy, and there we actually saw the 1080 beat the 480s at every resolution. Our MSI Gaming X GTX 1070, however, lost by a small amount to the 480s at 1440p and 4K. So that's still a big win for AMD. Now moving into other games, we get numbers that make a little more sense in terms of the price points at least. The GTX 1080 does better in GTA 5, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and The Witcher 3, although it does appear that Tomb Raider's crossfire support was non-existent. We saw virtually no change between single and dual card setups. We also saw an actual decrease in FPS when playing in DirectX 12 mode, as opposed to the slight increases in FPS the 1080 displayed. Now, in synthetic benchmarks, we see near-identical results, indicating that the differences we see in performance between the 1080 and dual RX 480s have largely to do with individual games' crossfire support. Rise of the Tomb Raider appears to have none of that, but that could have something to do with the early release drivers we were using. But in terms of the raw performance that is available with a dual RX 480 setup and a 1080 setup, it actually looks pretty similar. 
So hopefully we see more developers adding Crossfire support to games because that would greatly increase this uh, value proposition here. Now I've pretty much been talking about dual RX 480s. What about the card's single GPU performance? In the games we tested, we got very playable frame rates at 1080p and 1440p, even getting up to 113.8 in GTA 5 at 1080p. At 4K, we got over 30 in Ashes of the Singularity and GTA 5, but dipped under for Tomb Raider and The Witcher 3. But I mean, looking at these benchmarks right there, I mean, here's where the RX 480 shines. It'll give you a killer experience at 1080p or 1440p with high settings in current games for that price. Besides pure power though, the RX 480 has a couple interesting things to offer. First, its power consumption is ridiculously low thanks to the 14 nanometer FinFET process that Polaris is built on. We measured the system's wattage draw from the wall and at idle, it hovered around just 60 watts. A single RX 480 under load used only 160 watts, which makes sense given that its TDP is 150, and in Crossfire, the highest we saw it get was 390 watts. This means the 480 is able to stay extremely quiet through its operation. I did not notice noise coming from the card at all until I leaned close. Launching with the RX 480 is AMD's new Radeon Wattman software, what a name, which replaces their overdrive tool. It offers more control over GPU voltage, engine clocks, memory clocks, fan speed, and temperature with the ability to completely customize profiles for individual games through Radeon software. This is going to be very popular with GPU tweakers and fiddlers like Ivan, who some of you may know as the crazy Russian, who was going crazy with excitement. So where does all this leave us? AMD has launched a card that skirts convention. Rather than trying to elbow Nvidia out of the top spot, they came in low, aiming for that low to mid-range price point with performance that doesn't really have any business being there before Nvidia could launch their cards at the competing price point. So it'll be interesting to see what Nvidia does in response to the RX 480, and it'll also be interesting to see what AMD does when they launch Vega sometime later this year maybe or next year we actually don't know when it's going to launch um so yeah if you guys are interested in the rx 480 it is available at ncix so you can click here or the link in the description uh to head to our site to check that out and if not then don't click either of those that's it for this video guys thanks for watching click here to watch more videos follow us on social media over here and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from ncix and now it is 12.40 in the morning. So I'm going to go and edit this and hopefully get some sleep. We'll see. See you later.